about three billion gamers globally. In fact, most of you here or watching this are gamers, whether it's on your phone, your computer, mobile devices, everyone plays games. It is one of the things that makes us fundamentally human. All of us, though, grew up being told that gaming was a waste of time, that gaming was something that we needed to leave behind to go into the real world and get a job and sit in an office. And as my father so eloquently put it, turn off that idiot box and go outside. <laughs> but today, with play and earn and play to own gaming, you can actually earn a living from playing video games. This is, without equivocation, an absolute game changer, especially in the developing world. <laughs> now, for me, making a difference in the developing world is something that became a mandate, personally, after my experiences in Haiti. In 2010, amid the dust and rubble of what, is, what was then, and unfortunately still is, uh, post-earthquake Port-au-Prince, I experienced and saw amazing tales of human tragedy. And it wasn't just the children living in tent cities who were orphans because their parents were still buried under rubble somewhere. It wasn't just the mother trying to feed her children when there was no food available. It wasn't just the, the person who gave birth to twins who lived for only five minutes because she had only had one meal a week for the last two months of her pregnancy. It was that the entire situation from beginning to end was entirely unnecessary and broken. While there were governmental agencies and NGOs working in Port-au-Prince at the time, very little aid was actually making it to the people on the street who needed it the most. At every step of the process, aid was, you know, filtering out. There was a leaky aid pipeline. This informed my work in the creation of what I termed the aid dollar, which was designed to be a solution to fix the leaky aid pipeline. However, what I found is that working with governments and working with NGOs, as passionate as they can be, specifically the NGOs, they are very, very high-minded, honest people. It's almost impossible to make any traction, to make a real difference, because they don't move quickly enough. Every step would be blocked by bureaucracy or slowed down. And the people who really, really needed help can't afford to have those sorts of slowdowns. And so this is why I got into gaming. Now, that may seem like a strange step, right? But the idea is, is in gaming, you have economies. You have these amazing, balanced economies that are built uh, to support a game ecosystem. But for the most part, up until today, those game economies have been controlled only by a publisher who has received all of the funding and has done nothing with it other than go on and make more games, which is their job. That's fine. That's what they do. But what we have found is that what if we think about this differently? What if we change the way that we think about gaming? What if we make it so that what people pay into a game gets taken out by somebody else who needs it. This transforms the industry in very, very major ways. Now, many of you have paid for items inside of video games. Okay, you may have you know, bought a gun or a skin or you know, some sort of special weapon. Or those of you who maybe aren't as savvy of gamers have looked at your credit card statement and then looked at your kid <laughs> and said, Re really, $29.95 for a hat? Does that, that doesn't seem right. Um, all of you know the pain of paying for something and getting absolutely nothing in return. This is why at Gala Games we have changed this. We have built a play to earn and play and earn and play to own gaming ecosystem. It works like this. You have two players. One player, often somebody in the developed world, with plenty of extra money to burn, wants to pay their way through a game. They want to have the premier gaming experience, but maybe they don't have time. 
And on the other hand, you have somebody else who does have time but maybe doesn't have opportunities to do some of the other things. This person can get into a game, can play, can level up characters. They can become a crafter of potions or a skilled blacksmith. And they can create an item, put that item on the blockchain, and sell it to this person over here who is happy to buy it. This has facilitated a seamless transfer of wealth from one person to the other. And this makes a real difference. There are so many stories I could share about how this has changed people's lives, some of who are even potentially watching this right now. But there are three that I'd like to focus on. The first is a young woman. She has been, for generations, a sharecropper. Her family has been tied to bondage to the land for generations. Today, she owns her land. She owns her family's house for the first time in their memory because she plays video games. We have another who has, was suffering under crippling medical debt, and they have been able to clear that medical debt and begin building up a future for their family because they play video games. We have a third who had very, very, very heavy student loans that they were able to pay off because they play video games. There are thousands of stories like this, and I hear many, many of them every single day, and this is why I do what I do. But the number that I want you guys to take away from this tonight is 2.2 billion. In 2021, we unlocked $2.2 billion, with a B, of play-to-earn revenue for our players. This is much more than we as a company made. I think that that's, we're the first company in history that has given away more money than we made. Um, but this is, this is the key thing, because that changes lives. That changes lives, and it, in, it, it inspires us to ask questions. We were only able to do this because we challenged literally every single assumption along the way. We were told from the beginning this was not possible. We were told that gaming was a waste of time. Nobody would ever play these sorts of things. And everybody was wrong. And so by challenging the assumptions, by saying no to those who told us no, we have been able to make a big difference. But there's still several unanswered questions. What if you could get paid to listen to music? What about watching a movie? Wouldn't it be nice to get a little bit of money for your exercise? Thank you very much.